Hey everybody, welcome to Ask a Realtor Anything, episode 5. I can't believe we've actually done 5 episodes, but welcome back. Hopefully we've answered some of your guys' questions. So last week, Shani's question was about being licensed in 3 states, Arizona, Idaho, and Utah. And we said that she could theoretically do that, but it'd be kind of difficult. Up for this week, Brooke's question is, what brokerage firm should I go to? And we wanted to ask that, or we wanted to answer that by talking about the size of the firm instead of what actual firm you should go to. The size of the firm actually has a big part in how you will fit into the group and what kind of group scenario and dynamics that you want to fit with. Last week I said we were going to talk about small firms and large firms and what those entail. So I've written down three pros and one con for each size of firm and kind of what you can expect to fit with in those. Now, you can you can imagine that every firm is going to operate differently. And you can imagine that every single firm, big or small, will have tendencies towards whichever way they run their business. But as a whole, you can imagine that most of the firms that are big will operate a certain way, and most of them that are small will operate in an entirely different way. So I'll be answering these questions kind of based off of my own experience and we'll see how we go on those. The three pros for the small firms are you're usually in a tight-knit group. You'll find that you work with a lot of the same agents right there in the, in the office or they'll be your friends, family, or people that you've known for a long time. And it seems like small firms that are a child out of a bigger company, you know, somebody that came out of those out of that company and built their own firm and brought agents with them, you'll find that they've been working together for a long time. So they're in a, re a really ni nice tight knit group. Second, they are you're you're typically going to find that you'll keep more of your commissions in a small firm, and that's just due to amount of fees and things like that associated with running a large business for the other side. So in a small group, your tendencies are to keep more of your commissions. And then third, there's less mandatory meetings and less mandatory training. Of course, they're going to have training. They're always going to want to train you, but there are going to be far fewer mandatory meetings and sales meetings and get together meetings and things like that. Just because big business is always trying to keep everybody together and they have a lot more information to disseminate. So you'll, you'll find that in a small group, you won't have as many mandatory meetings. The one con though, uh, the one con that I wrote down for a small firm is that you don't have a big business name running behind your business. So starting out into real estate, sometimes it's easier to join a big firm that already has a name out there. Let's say Coldwell Banker, Century 21, Keller Williams, any of these big firms, they've already built a system, they have a name brand that you can get behind, and typically they have things already started for you. So the three pros that I wrote down for a big business or a big firm is, the first one is big business name that you can get behind. They've already started it, they've already got everything going, you can kind of just come in and start where they have set you up and also just start doing the business. Number two is you'll have a lot of agents that are actually working there, actually working the business. You'll have plenty of full-time agents. You'll have a few part-time, but typically in a big business scenario like that, they have a lot of top producing agents. And you can ride on their coattails and learn from their experience and also take some of their clients in regards to, let's say they have too many houses to have open houses for they will always let you have an open house or hold one of their houses open for them because they know they're providing a service to their seller and you get to have exposure and experience talking to people and holding the house open and just talking about real estate so the more people you can get in front of the better on that part and number three is paid advertising so that big business already has all the paid advertising rolling into effect. So they have brochures, they have newspaper articles, they have magazines. They're all over the internet and you get to kind of ride on the coattails of that. 
Now, the one con, I say that caveat to all of the pros that I had just said, the one con is you're typically going to keep less of your commissions and you're going to have to pay office fees. That's just part of how they do their business. Okay, uh, I was in a big firm when I first started real estate in North Carolina and there was office dues. You had to pay for copy machine paper and printing ink and all sorts of stuff that just kind of came out at the end of the month. And if you're a fresh starting agent and not selling or closing any houses that month, then you kind of paid the fees and it was just like you were spinning your wheels. Now, I'm not saying that in a small firm you won't have any of that. It's just that in a big firm, they always have mandatory fees and mandatory franchise fees and cuts that kind of cut into all of your commissions. So you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt. If you want all of those items, big business, agents working around you, you know, then you have to typically pay for it. And that's how it works. So in a small firm, you won't have as many of, of those fees. You'll keep more of your commissions, but if you are not good about getting your own clientele, then you won't succeed there either. Well, you, if you're not getting your own clientele at either location, you're not going to succeed either. So that's part of it too. So up for next week, Dan's asked a question, and his question is, I'm pre-approved. How do I buy that house? So the question seems kind of simple, but it's got a lot of twists and turns, and we'll answer that next week. So once again, thanks for everybody coming in. Thanks for watching Ask a Realtor Anything. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your views. And hopefully you guys click like in the bottom and subscribe so we can get more people and more questions. So thanks again. We'll see you next week. Hey everybody, welcome to Ask a Realtor Anything, episode four, I believe. Oh, scratch that. Each type. What? What are you making? Y'all have one. They're only on the bloopers. <laughs>